How's it going, y'all? This is Jose Bonilla here. Yes, Jose Bonilla here. I'm going to be conducting an in-depth demo unique for the manufacturing industry. And I'm a consulting executive here at ADP's PO Business Services. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Now my agenda is going to be a specific uh, impact to the role. Yeah, of course, uh, what I'm going to be covering here is the impact to your role in your specific organization. And I'm also going to be covering a little bit about my background and role here at ADP and how the features that we have are going to save time, reduce risk, save money, and of course recap towards the end and then discuss the next steps. So I'm going to go ahead and transition to the impact that it can have on your role. First thing I'm going to be identifying here is that there's a, a presence of problems, of course, um, from you not having these solutions in place currently, uh, with using the current systems that you have, what you're doing is you're working out extra hours during the week. Uh, if you find yourself often working more than 53 hours a week, uh, you're spending extra hours at work, and that's increasing your stress. And when you increase your stress, that decreases your productivity. So, of course, your productivity goes down, then the CEO starts coming down upon you as well. If you're a chief financial officer or if you're a, uh, you know, a controller or accounting manager, and this is your role, but you got a couple of things thrown on top of you, man, it builds a lot of stress. And that could lead to, you know, health problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, depression, anxiety. And then all the extra time you're spending at work, well, if you're at work, you're spending it away from family. You're spending it away from friends. You're spending it away from your community. You know, you're missing out on baby showers, child births, birthdays, you know, socializing with your friends at happy hours or intramural games, uh, you know, or barbecues, you know, children's sporting events. It, you know, you're missing out on your grandkids. That's a lot going on on here that's outside of the world of work. And that's uh, why I actually like ADP because, you know, got a great deal of work-life balance. Now, uh, the other impact that's having on you, you uh, with your career specifically is that maybe promotions are eluding you because you're unable to get that breakthrough that they want you to, you know, to get, to get that productivity that you want you to get. Or you're, as the CEO or owner, you're seeing that you can't get to that upper echelon plateau so you can start competing at a higher level, you know, bringing in that additional revenue so you can start expanding. And you can't do these things with the systems you currently have in place. So... The impact that the solution is going to have to you is that, and that it has had to multiple businesses that I've helped thus far, is that it's going to lower your stress. You're not going to be spending as much time on these administrative tasks. You're not going to be spending that much time at work. You're going to have free time to focus on things that you really want to do in the organization itself that can help you towards getting that promotion and also break, you know, breaking through that uh, plateau uh, and getting to those revenue goals that you've been desiring. Okay. Now, uh, the what we're going to be doing is eliminating, eliminating over 500 hours, administrative hours that you're already doing for timekeeping, payroll, uh, H and R, uh, health, HR, health and benefits, uh, retirement services, workers comps, all that administration. You can push it to the wayside now if you enact this solution, and then of course you can. Get all that back so you can focus on driving Lean Six Sigma initiatives, uh, intentionally designing your culture instead of just letting it happen by accident. And be less of a tactician. Now, what I mean by that is that you're, you're focusing on daily tasks versus on the grander, bigger picture. So that's what we want you to do so you can be able to work on other things like uh, anticipating the production uh, tech transformation. Uh, and also, this is going to enable you to... Decrease your labor cost by 26%, which is the largest contributor to your cost of goods sold. So that's going to be a huge impact. Let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and transition. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself here. 
Uh, of course, who is Jose Bonilla? You want to know a little bit about me? I'm a full-time single father to Annalise, 13 years old, my oldest daughter, AJ, 10, and my daughter, Galilea, 6. I have Galilea full-time, full-time father all the time there, all by myself. So she's quite the handful. Luckily, I have family out here to help me out with that because uh, it takes a tribe. Absolutely does. And, uh, of course, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, businessman as well. I sell... Uh, beauty products online through e-commerce means. I have my own uh, web page, but also you leverage Amazon. As you can see here is my anti-aging face cream, a eternal enchantment brand called Eden's Essence. Uh, I've also started expanding out to uh, women's uh, professional uh, designed, tailored luxury uh, laptop totes that you know can get them through their day. You know, from getting up in the morning straight to the gym, uh, changing of clothes. You know, going to work, being professional still, having your laptop in there, having all your file folders, everything you need to get you through that day. And then even after work, if you're going to be participating in intramural sports, you can go ahead and swap right back out. If you're going to be hanging out with your girls afterwards or, uh, you know, friends or family, you can still look stylish with it. So that's my little transition that I got going on. Uh, a little bit uh, else besides, uh, you know, a little bit about me, uh, go Buffalo Bills. I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. You got to blame my dad for that one. Been watching them growing up in the 80s there and uh, watching them go back to back to Super Bowls. You know, I'm hooked ever since. Uh, of course, my dad was a New York everything fan. Rangers, Mets, Yankees, um, Giants, you know, whichever was playing, he was watching it. And But, of course, the Bills stuck with me, and I've been uh, a Bills fan ever since. All the way from Jim Kelly, now to our newest uh, Josh Allen. If you can see him with a huge leap he did into the end zone. That was uh, something that I, I remember here to this day. I look forward to next season. Very excited about that. And, of course, uh, some of the other hobbies that I have. Uh, I'm a gardener. You know, I grow fruits, vegetables, got trees, all kinds of flowers in my, in my, own, uh, my own land here in the house that I own. And I'm an avid motorcycle rider. Uh, this is the green motorcycle there, that Ninja Kawasaki, man. That's something that my daughter calls the green bean. Hilarious stuff. Unfortunately, you know, it's starting to take its toll on me riding, so I'm going to probably be transitioning to a cruiser because I can't be getting up on that one anymore. And I'm a disabled Army veteran, man. I spent 14 years in the service as an intelligence officer. Uh, and, of course, I transitioned well to ADP because I'm uh, advising decision makers on the opportunities and threats available to them so they can make a decision for the uh, near future in there to help the organization. So I'm excited. I want to also tell you that, you know, in the in my role here at ADP is a PO, Business Services Consulting Executive. I've helped over 217 businesses in the last two quarters alone. And, as a, and I'm a senior consulting executive here, so I've been around quite some time. Got an MBA. You can see uh, that I've used that already really well to, and make myself successful as an e-commerce uh, business owner, but of course, here in my career to help out so many businesses. So let's go ahead and transition to the next slide. I'm going to be talking about how you can uh, reduce costs and time and the different scenes between you outsourcing versus having in-house. Now, if you're uh, trying to conduct everything in-house, I've been doing the the numbers on here repeatedly and always comes up. It's the same thing I'm seeing uh, in and out. Most people think that it's just, oh, man, uh, it's just the cost that I'm paying for the payroll technology and the service itself. That's the only cost that really associated. Well, what about all the time that that payroll manager or even yourself as a finance officer or uh, anyone else that you delegated down to that task is spending? What about the time that they're actually spending on it? If you break it down from going from manual time cards, chasing down the supervisors, getting them to report the actual accurate time and hours on there to you, having those meetings, transitioning to manually inputting that information in the system, and then doing all the calculations, then handling all the money movement after you process the payroll, after you print checks, after you sign them, after you stuff them in the envelope, after you go ahead and go into the third-party administration sites for retirement, and health and benefits and deposit all the money specifically for all the individual accounts, you're spending at a minimum eight hours a day, easy. Eight hours in a, in a week, eight hours, easy, okay? Now, for some simple statistics, you can see in here the time that they're spending, 
they're going to be spending at least half an hour per employee per week to handle payroll and HR administrative tasks. And of course, if you're spending that much time, about 20 employees is about, to give you an example, is about 10 hours weekly. So you got 52 weeks in a year, it's easy 520 hours lost, 520 hours lost by one employee. Now, it could be your time that you've been losing on there, that you've been doing. You've been doing the tactician. You've been manually putting this in because uh, you want to make sure it's accurate. I can definitely understand that. But if you look at it, that's 520 hours that you can get back in your work week to dedicate to family or uh, dedicate to uh, you know different initiatives to be more impactful at your role. So, and now, hey, let me give you an example. The average payroll manager salary in New York is $11.50. And that was 520 hours. That's equaling $5,980 alone in cost specific to the salary of the employee, not to mention the cost for the software and the tech as well. Now, some of the other costs that you need to be considering is consultative costs because, you know, a lot of these uh, payroll managers or ad hoc payroll, you know, processing specialists that either you uh, delegate it down to administrative uh, assistant or that you delegate down to a manager or that you're doing yourself I mean you're not certified in it so that's going to increase the probability of having an error and then you're going to be most likely you know having a bookkeeper or an, a certified uh, a CPA look at it at the end of the year and fixing all those books for you because the payroll was done incorrectly I've talked to many CPAs. I work with them uh, day in, day out. They send uh, many of their clients over my way and because they really ain't making that much money off of all the time they have to spend on fixing your payroll. They'd rather outsource and send it back up to us. So that's, if that's not telling something, I think it speaks for itself. Now, if you're, uh, if you're doing everything in-house, on average it's going to cost you, you know, less than employees, $157.31 per employee on there. When, if you outsource this thing, it's about $20 per employee. Now, uh, those are the average numbers on it. That's pretty big time. Big, big, big way to save you some money and free up that manpower on there. So let me go ahead and uh, transition now. I'm going to show you the system itself so you can see how quickly you can actually process your payroll. So let's dive into it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove this slide. And... So you can see here, here's the run platform. Uh, this is the landing page you're going to be landing on. Let me go ahead and move this so you can see it clearly. Well, make sure you get a full visual of the run platform. Exactly what it looks like when you come and you land on the screen. So if you take a quick glance on here, here's the run platform. You can we'll make some more adjustments on here. And then I'll start zooming in on the screen itself so you can see different features of it. To go ahead and process run, uh, to process your payroll, on your, lad, on your dashboard, you see this little semicircle with the dollar sign? You click on that semicircle with the dollar sign, and it'll take you to the next screen. And you can see the pay period, and this example is biweekly. You can see the pay period, the check date that's going to be issued. You can click start payroll. And here you can, I will manually load up all these employees for you. So you don't be worried about, oh, man, it's a huge hassle. You know, if you transitioned away from a, another provider that was you was outsourcing it through because maybe the costs were too high in your mind and then you wanted to tackle it manually again and you went to a more labor-intensive solution, kind of like uh, into a QuickBooks, and you had to manually input all that information yourself, whoo, don't worry about that. All you have to do is export an Excel, export a report, send it to me, and I'll manually input it here in the system. Here, uh, you'll have all your employees loaded up and all their employee info, I9W4 info, direct deposit info, it's all going to be in there for you pre-built, okay? Now, if you can take a look, you do a quick overview, you can see the regular hours, overtime, vacation, personal hours, double time, and any additional hours, uh, categories, you can go ahead and, man and make these edits on here to display how you like. And let's just say if you had an employee that didn't work 80 hours, you're doing, you're doing time keeping manually. I uh, highly advise against it because you, you can save up to 2% on that. 2% of the total salary and payroll that you're processing in a year. You can save up 2% of that payroll by having more accurate timekeeping. 
So if you're doing it manually, you can make the edits in here. You say, hey, if you're tracking it, you notice Alexander left, and you happen to notice it, and you say, man, he didn't work 80 hours. He only worked 79. You can make the adjustment in here. Uh, if you see uh, Ian Jones, you know, uh, you can see Ian Jones. You can make uh, different adjustments to him as well. You can put him in a different department, pay him at a different rate. Uh, you can, in here, you can make all the adjustments as necessary. Uh, you can see if uh, an employee had worked uh, overtime hours, you can make the edits on there as well. And you can also make an edit to the rate of pay. If you feel like, hey, you know what, uh, there's a new labor law that came out that's forcing me to increase my pay rates you know, to $12.50, I'm going to go ahead and make that change in here. Or if you're going to give uh, Victoria a pay raise, she's been performing extremely well. She's been there for quite some time. You don't want her transitioning elsewhere. You want to reward her for her loyalty. You give her a little pay raise, $12.75. All those uh, edits are automatically populated and calculated in the system here. You can see that they have vacation hours, sick hours, personal hours, any bonus amounts, overtime, miscellaneous. All that's going to be in here in the system ready for you to view and make any edits. And if you click next, it takes you to your 1099 employees. You can have direct deposit for 1099 employees as well here in the system. You can pay them by the hour, a flat rate. Uh, you can just do a certain amount on there that you want to pay them. You know, if it's uh, $500, you can pay them just that that amount, or you can pay them by a certain, uh, you know, per hour rate, whatever contract you establish with your uh, subcontracting team, your 1099s. And then here, you can go ahead and uh, preview the payroll. As you can see, uh, let me go ahead and uh, zoom in here for you. So you can start seeing some of this a little bit better. All right, so you can see the employees' names, all the total number of hours, what department they were at, uh, what rate of pay, if it was regular pay, if it was paid for being a server, dishwasher, you can put all that in here because uh, some of them, you know, do multiple jobs. And then you got uh, the gross pay taxes, the deductions, net pay, uh, employer taxes. All right, all that's going to be here for you to do a quick review. And you can even add a check stub message if you wanted to. You can say, hey, thanks for your hard work. Enjoy your weekend. You know, if that's a message you wanted to distribute, you can go ahead and put that in there. Or if you gave them a bonus, say Merry Christmas, whatever it may be. And any adjustments that you wanted to do during that time frame, you can go ahead and input that into the system. Uh Let's go back and let me disable that screen there. Okay, so if you click approve, just as quickly as that, you're done with your payroll. You didn't spend hours manually inputting the hours. Uh, you didn't spend hours, you know, trying to track down those timesheets from everybody. It's already uploaded in the system, automatically synced from my timekeeping system into the payroll platform. Or you can use a timekeeping system that's more uh, robust, that's unique to your industry, you know, if you're using something that's for the manufacturing industry specifically, you want to keep that, you felt like it's working well, you can actually integrate with our marketplace system as well, okay? So let's go ahead and we already processed the payroll, your report's already done, you can see the amount that was going to come out of your account, you can see that before it's going to come out of your account, so you can cross-reference it, and then you can click process. You can see different uh, reports on here. You can uh, pull immediately. You can print the checks if you want to print them out there manually. Um, but, you know, if you're doing, if you're letting us take care of it, you can do, we can overnight the checks to you the very next day. You can process on a Thursday, get the checks on a Friday. Uh, first thing, before or close the business by 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they usually arrive pretty, pretty early on there. If you're in a remote location, we use third-party couriers. Uh, we're partnered with the uh, UPS, so if UPS can't reach you in time, we're going to use a third-party courier to make sure you get your uh, payroll statements in hard checks. Now, if you're not using hard checks, guess what? You can use direct deposit, and the money gets deposited automatically. Let me go back to the home so we can dive into a little bit about the employee deductions on here. If you go to company and earnings deductions, you can see in here that you can indicate what a regular rate of pay is, what overtime is, what uh, if you can do for tipped uh, employees, 
You can do uh, tip credits, cash tips. Uh, you can do, well, it's not really going to apply for the manufacturing industry, but, you know, vacation, sick time, personal. You can make any edits in here. Uh, make the edits to the rate of accruals. Uh, you can, you know, put in different deductions in here if you're giving your employees advances. Some of them, you know, some companies have done that. I've seen a manufacturing plant that uh, fills what they do. They put the seeds in the envelopes uh, and ship them out to different distributors in the, in the state of Connecticut. Now, uh, they like to give them uh, advances and, you know, interest-free loans to keep them out of trouble so they can show up to work for the vehicles. You know, it's a high risk, but it's a small community, and they take on that level of risk. So here they can give them the advance for that loan, or they can start taking the deductions back out for that advance they gave them, the, the loan they gave them, any union dues. If you have a union set up, you can do uh, meals if you're uh, providing meals for them. Uh and you can do child support, you know, um, if uh, there's different other deductions out there for student loans, the government is coming after it for the taxes, you, you can go ahead and make sure you put all those here in the system as well. You can also add an earning. Now, the earnings, you can put standard earnings, paid time off, fringe benefits. Uh, if you're giving fringe benefits like covering for a life insurance or a real life insurance policy over $50,000 as an incentive for your employees and you're paying for it, you can cover that in the fringe benefit. So not only it records in the statements, it also records in the W-2s properly. Now, here you can go into reimburse expenses as well. Uh, now, if you're like reimbursing them for spending a little extra money to go buy some steel toe boots, spending some extra money to buy... Um, you know, shirts and pants, you know, some khaki shirts and pants. If you're not providing them the uniforms anymore, uh, you expect them to just come into work in their own uh, attire. If you want to comp them for that, you can, okay? Uh, you can pay them, uh, you know, if you're on production lines, uh, you know, sometimes a manager's pay for performance. If they meet their daily go and they've been doing it for a whole week, they'll go ahead and pay them for that time period, okay? You can pay them, so you can put that under incentives, an extra rate of pay per hour. Uh, you can you can do on-call. You can pay them extra money for on-call. You can pay them extra money for working on the weekend. Uh, you can do, you know, um, severance pay. If you're trying to transition a manager or a salaried employee out of your organization, they've been there for quite some time, and... Uh, you encourage them to, or you're trying to downsize and you need to provide them severance pay because it was part of your uh, offerings when you brought them on board, you can do that as well. Uh, you can do back pay if you messed up the payroll. Hopefully not. Let's, let's try not to do that. If you're doing it here with ADP, uh, you're not going to be, uh, you're not going to have to do any of these, uh, errors, especially if you're doing the timekeeping. You didn't make any manual errors on there because the timekeeping is automatic. So they punch in, punch out. And, and there's no denying electronic uh, records on there, okay? So, and so we went ahead and covered that as far as what all can you do with the payroll itself. Let's go ahead and dive into the uh, timekeeping piece because, uh, you know, trying to reduce costs, the timing that you spend in here. Let's go in back to the home page. If you go into the time management systems that ADP already has in place, wait for this here to load real fast you know i'm sure that your internet works a lot faster at work <laughs> so here you can do individual time cards you can uh make any edits on here to the time cards themselves you can review them uh, see where they're at if there was any specific pay codes you want to implement in here into the specific time card um, different accrual balances and rates that you can put in for um uh, for vacation time, for sick time, for personal time, for comp time, you can put all that in here. Uh, you can also go if you go back to the home screen on here. You can do scheduling, so the employees they can download an app and put it on their phone. And if they go to the home page on here, uh, they can have their schedule. You can manipulate the schedule in here. You can delegate the task down, and actually uh, delegate the task down to one of the supervisors to be able to. You know, review this item uh, with you and make those edits and create the schedule and you don't have to do it yourself. It's already in the system. The employee can see it and it works well for them. OK, you can also generate certain reports. Um, see if you, you can see here, you put in the start date, start time, end date, end time, hours, the shifts, specific shifts, you know, days of the week on there. You can make the checks on here as necessary. 
All right. And you can make all these necessary changes, the employee ID, who it applies to, click continue, and apply to a certain group of employees. You can make all these uh, different edits in here. Uh, you can also go into any exceptions. If you may, you can review exceptions on here. If you've seen a bunch of exceptions being made by the supervisors, you can you know, inquire as to why that's occurring. Uh, you can get different reports for time and attendance uh, generated. Of course, this is a demo. It's not a live system. So, uh, you know, sometimes the when you click on something, it doesn't go anywhere. But I wanted to go ahead and refresh the screen, see if it'll take us there. If not, you can see, the, um, you know, overall what you can do with the platform, with the timekeeping system on there, and the fact that you can run reports uh, with the, uh, the system. If we click on reports, you can see that a uh, you can run uh, reports on employees that are getting ready to approach overtime. Uh, you can uh, do an employee list. You can do supervisor uh, supervisors assigned to employee specific list reports. Uh, you can do time card reports on here. Total hours paid to your employees. Uh, summer report for total hours uh, for the week, and you can do it for any time pay periods on there. And then. So I mean it's pretty pretty in depth system and there's three different models you can have a we close this out we can go into the timekeeping system a little bit more uh, let's go ahead and slide into your return on investment specifically for the timekeeping I can show you here what the impact it will have on your organization and let me adjust this screen for you. So you can see these numbers. If you do some a quick calculator that can show you the impact that it will have on your organization, you know, from the time that you're investing here into the employee themselves and uh, the personnel that you're involving in it, the time that it takes, the percentage that you can save by accurate timekeeping. So let me show you right here, a little zoom in real fast. If you're doing on a weekly basis, you got 20 employees, you're paying them in a pay period of 40 hours per pay period, and you're doing an average pay rate, you know, in New York, you know, he's saying this average earnings by $11.50. Uh, total hours uh, per pay period, you can see total hours per pay period is already automatically calculated. Total payroll for that number of employees, and this is the accuracy thing. 1.2% right here, human error. You can get a savings of $110 per pay period. 52 times a year, guess what? That's $5,000 with implementing the timekeeping system. You talk about cutting costs, okay? Regulating costs, minimizing risk. That's your role as a chief financial officer on there, you know, doing the financial analysis, make sure the, the health of the organization is at its best financially. This is a quick way for you to show you how to go ahead and cut costs. Now, if you want to talk about the time savings, so that's five thousand dollars right there. We switch over to time. You're paying a more uh, capable individual, you know, to like your. Uh, if you got uh, twenty employees, you can only manage like four employees. Really, you can probably go up a little higher if you're doing a production line. If you're trying to stretch it, you know, effectively, you can only really manage four employees. You probably have a team leader for four. Uh, you probably have. Uh, you know, in a production line up to 20, 20, by, you know, 10 to 15 per shift. You have multiple shifts. You can get as big as you want with it. But for what I'm seeing on here, if you're going to have at least 20 employees, you know, you're going to have at least five supervisors in here, you know, some form, either their team lead or manager overseeing that crew there. And actually, you're going to throw in the payroll manager that talks to all those supervisors, okay? And they're earning about $20 an hour. Um, if they're they're saving over 240 minutes instead of having to keep timekeeping themselves, total time saved per year over 208 hours. That's another four thousand dollars. Okay, that's huge, huge return on investment. Time savings and also improved accuracy savings. That's a total of ten thousand dollars for your total return on investment for investing in this technology here. Uh, of course, they can use the ADP app, punch in, punch out on their clocks. Uh, you can put a control on there where they can only punch in uh, when they're within a certain radius of your establishment. So they can't be uh, Dunkin' Donuts getting coffee and punch in there and then still punch in uh, on time. No, 
They, they got to be at your facility getting through the doors already, okay? If you want to eliminate uh, buddy punching, you get a time clock right here. And let me adjust this so you can see it. You can get a time clock and on your wall, physical time clock where they can, you know, use biometrics to go ahead and scan in. That means using the thumbprint. And it's compliant by the uh, labor laws, the federal labor laws as well. And as far as record keeping and security protocols. So you can go ahead and uh, scan their thumbprint on here. And there's no buddy punching. You know, I know that's a big ordeal at some manufacturing industry locations on there, either a plant or if you're a, uh, a facility. You know, buddy punching. If you, somebody, sometimes, you know, the employees, they think they're looking out for their partners. Like they don't want them to be fired. They don't want to get written up. They don't want to have a demerit or whatever it may be of your uh, system for discipline. And they want to punch in their buddy. Say, hey, man, go and punch me in, man. I left my time car. Uh, uh, my time uh, badge on the wall locker, you can go ahead and punch me in. You, I left my, my, just grab my time card and punch me in for me. I don't want to be late. Instead of doing that, you know what? You eliminate buddy punching in its entirety, which is technically wage theft, and you can implement this system. You can also implement a system in here where you can do the badge. Uh, they can just scan their badge. It beeps on and off and punches them in, punches it out for their lunch breaks, for their... Uh, you know, 10-minute breaks that they need to have uh, for um, punching out if they're working overtime, extra breaks that they need to be taking. Uh, also, uh, punching back in from their breaks and also, you know, punching out at the end of the day. Uh, they can also use the keypad. They can put in a specific code associated with them. Now, so those are the uh, different systems in place. Let me go ahead and close that out. So you can see how timekeeping can be a very impactful tool on there to minimize the amount of cost that your uh, organization, to minimize your number one cost, which is labor, okay? Now, so we talked about uh, reducing costs on here and outsourcing payroll. Uh, you can see how quickly it can be done uh, with the system, with the run platform. So what we want to do is go ahead and go back to the slides. Let's go ahead and transition and start talking about, uh, you know, risk and a little bit more about risk in itself versus anything else. So diving into risk. Let's go ahead and take a look at risk uh, on the next slide. So you can see, you know, different ways for you to reduce risk. Right now, there's different ways for you to take to deal with risk in its entirety. You know, uh, my MBA is in uh, specifically, uh, of course, in business administration, but I have a... Uh, concentration as being a program manager um, and what we look at is in reducing risk is there's a couple different things you can do you can accept the risk you can avoid the risk in its entirety uh, let's say I'll give you an example if you don't want to be impacted by the labor laws in the state of New York you know uh, move to Connecticut you know that's probably not gonna, <laughs> probably not gonna help you out that much. Maybe move to Kentucky. All right, labor laws are less extreme. Okay, if you uh, want to take on, you know, if you're working out, you're getting great risk. You want to avoid state income tax. Move your business to if you're right on the border. I mean, move your business to Nevada versus in California. There's different ways for you to avoid risk. Okay, or you can just take on the risk. You're like, hey, that's fine. I'm not worried about getting fined. It's no big deal. Uh, look, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of investigations being done for OSHA safety violations, for timekeeping errors on there, uh, for labor law violations. And we can go straight to their page here and uh, Department of Labor page. We can see specifically, specifically for the state of New York, you know, different businesses that are in the manufacturing industry, they're getting fined in your state. And I'll break that down to you here later. But, you know, there's uh, what else you can do to minimize the risk is transfer that risk. Transferring the risk and sending it over to and by outsourcing it, it's the same thing you do with insurance. Uh, outsourcing the insurance, uh, you're pretty much transferring the risk on there. If you're saying, hey, you know what? Um, what I'm doing is saying that should something occur, the, this is a policy against it, okay? Well, 
guess what? When you're outsourcing payroll, that's exactly what you're doing. You get to minimize the, you can transfer the risk of payroll processing errors, timekeeping overtime errors, uh, payroll tax payment errors and filing errors. Uh, you can you can transfer uh, retirement money transfer timeline errors because you know for retirement you're supposed to be able to transfer that money and put it in the capital apply it to their account less than ten days. So if you got your payroll manager uh, processing payroll in advance and then they're taking vacation and they're like, well, I'm kind of pushing up towards my deadline. I'm trying to leave. I want to catch my flight on time. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, not worry about this and do it when I get back. So she goes on vacation. She's gone for seven days. She comes back. She forgets about it. Next payroll processing is on a Thursday. Wow. She's been gone. Essentially, she's put that task aside for 14 days. Now you're in violation for not putting the correct retirement money in the correct accounts in the correct time frame. You know, uh, retirement investment mismanagement. If your employees, if you have a retirement account and you got a payroll manager transferring deposit into the account and they're just selecting uh, what you felt was the best investments for your um, for your staff, for your employees, and then they realize that it took a huge dive, they saw it in the report, and then they come up to you and say, hey man, what the heck was this? You know, you were responsible for investing my money and doing it the right way, and you didn't. They can come after you for that. So that's if you're transferring that risk over to ADP, you know, we have... A, a system in place where all that risk is transferred to us. We handle the money movement. We make sure it gets there on time. We pay your health and benefits premium on time. Uh, you can have HIPAA violations. Instead of, um, you know, employees coming to you and asking you health and benefits questions and divulging a little bit something about their health, and instead of having that risk where you could potentially discuss it with a another coworker, um, you know, just nonchalantly bringing it up. You can say they probably didn't even have a need to know. You just let them know, hey, look, they're going to be out. Their supervisor, they really know, need to know about their health, but they reported it to you saying they're going to be out. And the supervisor reports it to the team lead and they give the details. That's a HIPAA violation right there. Now, if additionally, you know, the employee gets terminated, say you don't even terminate them for that, but you terminate them for something else. Like, heck, they've just been missing a lot of days at work. You know, it seems pretty normal. Heck, if you're sick, you're missing days because you're going out and you're trying to take care of yourself, right? You ran out of sick days, but you got to show up to work, so you let them go. But if they had felt that you potentially they, their discussion with you and divulging that health uh, ailment that they had and they got terminated for it, they say they, say, they can say they got terminated for it. Now you got a, a wrongful termination lawsuit on your behalf, Okay. Now, also, uh, labor law compliance violations. Man, there's so many changes to labor laws. I'll dive into them on the next screen on here. And uh, matter of fact, here, let me show you this real fast. Uh, if we're going to go um, we go to the state of New York, you can see all these different violations that are occurring in the state of New York right now. And the Department of Labor hired on, you know, thousands and thousands of more in, in, you know, personnel to be able to uh, implement these laws, you know, that they're, that they're applying. So let me go ahead and bring this up here into your screen so you can see it. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. I'm going to, let's go ahead and zoom back out on here. So you can see you know, read about it, see the different reports. The uh, reason why I bring this up, so you just can be in the know. You know, this is an in-depth uh, demo. I want to make sure you're fully aware of what's out there and what kind of challenges you're facing by trying to handle all this on your own. So, all right, so you can see some of the reports on here. Here in just the 2020 alone, uh, it shows a report here in federal court since his former New Jersey insurance broker, after a guilty plea for healthcare fraud following U.S. Department of Labor investigation. You know, I mean, different little things happen on there all the time. Uh, U.S. Department of Labor again cites New Jersey aluminum manufacturer for safety failures after an employee hospitalized. Okay, that's in Delaware, New Jersey, right there close to y'all. Man, faced $169,524 in penalties for violations. 
for OSHA violations. Big time, big time, okay? Uh, if you look in the year of 2019, I mean, we're only two months in. You're seeing, you know, two companies facing these huge things. Now, of course, um, if you look in here, you can see over $85 million in grants were given away. That's big time. You know, they're always looking out for the personnel. Department of Labor reaches settlement with global meat supplier following safety and health citations. Another New Jersey facility. Uh, construction company paid $422,000 in OSHA penalties as well. Man, and interest. Oh, man, this is a lot. Uh, look, and here's another one. Department of Labor investigation results in judge ordering New Jersey Farm to pay $556,000 in back wages and penalties. Man, that's the kind of money. That's 147 farm workers. You know, if you if you do the math on that real fast, 147 farm workers, my goodness. Let me pull up my calculator on here. You know, just to see what kind of impact, you know, specific to your size of organization. It, you know, these numbers don't really make sense until you can see, you know, what could actually happen to you and your organization should one of these things fall upon you. Then you can plan for that risk itself. Is this something, if this is a high risk, low risk, medium risk, or something I can accept, you can make that kind of assessment. So if you're doing, you know, 200, you got 556,000, 1,000. $745. All right, you divide that by the 147 employees. All right, that's $3,000, $3,700 in back wages. You can see that right now. You know, not over here. <laughs> not a math wizard, so I, I, I put it on the calculator. <laughs> you got $3,800 per employee. Man, I say if you're 20 employees or more for your organization, that's $75,000. I don't know about you, seventy-five thousand dollars. That kind of impact to me on my organization, you know, you're liable to close the doors on that. Frankly, be put, I mean, if you didn't have cash reserves on there or an insurance policy to, you know, protect you against something like this, that's seventy-five thousand dollars that you have to pay now. Okay, or face even more penalties, more interest. You know. So, I mean, here's the manufacturing one, specific for manufacturing, you know, uh, for repeat violations of workplace safety and health laws here in uh, New Jersey. I mean, it, if you think you're exempt to it, you're not exempt. Uh, it's, they just haven't gotten around to you yet. And you don't want to have that risk out there. So let's go ahead and go back and focus on the task at hand. Let's go back to the uh, labor laws on here. Get rid of this. This uh, calculator, get that out your way. <laughs> All right, so like we spoke about, you can transfer the risk. And it speaks volumes. To me, that's a high risk. If you're going to get potentially risk getting fined $75,000, that's not a risk you want to deal with. So let's go ahead and take a look into the system itself so you can see how you can manage risk with the platform that we currently have here at ADP. Uh, with the run platform, if you're... Uh, if you want to look at reducing risk, you know, if you want to transfer some of those risks for the payroll processing errors, timekeeping errors, we already talked about that for uh, retirement money movement. I um, mean, you can you can go in here if we dive into the insurance section. You know, ADP, uh, we're a broker of uh, insurance, so you can pl implement uh, business coverages specific for your organization. You can uh, you know manage your coverages for general liability. Umbrella insurances for commercial and auto insurance for workers comp insurance. Uh, we partner with the top 10 um, workers compensation and insurance providers in your state. And that way you can get the best policy that's available for you as far as coverage and rates and also even get qualified uh, just in case that you're too risky as an organization. We can still get you qualified over behind another or another insurance provider. Now, us as a broker, what we'll be doing is, uh, you know, syncing it with your payroll. So that way it eliminates your upfront deposit. Now, you're, I'll give you an example. If you're paying, you know, a rate of, uh, we bring back up this calculator on here. Uh, you're paying a rate of, uh, you know, premium is, uh, you know, rate of $4 per 100, you know, 100 and, um, per 100 and 
payroll that you process in a year. Let's get this into the view. So if it's four dollars, that's on the low end. That's extremely low. That's just you know something, some number to work with on here. So on the low end, even on the low end, if you're gonna have uh, you're paying you know, twenty employees eleven dollars and fifty cents an hour times forty, you know times fifty two. All right, that's twenty three thousand per employee times twenty employees. All right, that's four hundred sixty thousand dollars and and your payroll in itself. You know if you're including yourself. You know, that's probably another $180,000. You got a pie staff of a management team of at least five, you know, for the payroll manager. You got uh, your supervisors. They're probably making about $40,000 each. So that's another $200,000 just to estimate, you know, your payroll for the year. So you get $740,000 for payroll, okay? And if you divide that, um, let's see here. If you divide that by 100, all right, that's the the rate that you're gonna be getting for your payroll uh, for the year, okay? And you multiply that times the per hundred dollar, the per hundred dollar rate for per hundred, right? So times four dollars. That's twenty nine thousand dollars. Either upfront deposit you would have to make for workers' comp insurance. Now that's on the low end, ah, extremely low. I underestimated that big time. I mean, this is for like. You know, workers' comp insurance for clerical work or something. <laughs> not, not for production labor work, okay? So uh, that's $29,000. Uh, you can estimate that to be even three times that amount for the laborers themselves. That gets you at $88,000. So you can see that range about $30,000, $88,000. And usually they require an upfront deposit of that, you know? So that's a huge amount. So imagine maintaining your cash flow a little bit better as a finance officer, if you can put that back into your cash flow, into your cash on hand for you, to your working capital, $88,000, instead of having to pay that up front. If you're a business owner, instead of having to pay that up front, you can put that back into investing into the production line, you know, to get uh, quicker equipment, to more training for your employees, to uh, implementing that Six Sigma, uh, you know, that Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma improvements into the uh, facilities. You can have someone outsourced to come in and review your facility and give you some feedback. Uh, you can have pre-inspections for safety, so you're ready for these OSHA. I mean, there's a lot that you can do with that money. You can give a bonus pay to your employees. You can bring on additional crew if needed if you're in the holiday season. You know, use that as a reserve on there. So that's the big impact on it, and it eliminates your end-of-year audits. Those audits that you have to go back and fight through and double check everything and, you know, dispute and argue with them. Hey, man, you're overestimated. You need to pay me. Uh, give me re give me a refund. You don't have to fidget with that because as you pay as you go with our workers' comp uh, premiums here with ADP. And that way you don't have no upfront deposit, no end of year audit because it's tracked accurately within your system. And you also get uh, employee benefits here for health and benefits. Um, the biggest way to transfer the risk for health and benefits is that the employees can consult with us. We also have where we can uh, help with your employees uh, onboarding there for the health and benefits for the open enrollment. All right, You can also have self-service for employees' health open enrollment. Uh, all that is here in the system, so you don't have to even administer any of the uh, the paying for the deductions or anything like that. We handle all the money movement. Uh, you can improve your retention for your organization as well and your competitiveness uh, for your the ones that, you know, for like a construction industry or because the manufacturing industry, the skills that they have there align greatly with the construction industry. So you can potentially be losing and be in competition with the employers in the construction industry as well or your local competitors and other manufacturing plants. So now... So offering uh, benefits would be a great way to, you know, improve your re employee retention. You got dental insurance, vision, group life insurance. You can do a premium only plan where uh, if you're having deductions coming out that you can have the proper forms taken care of for filing at the at the end of the year. Okay, uh, disability, short term, long uh, long term disability, volunteer benefits, all that's covered in here. And you can uh, coordinate with your benefits manager uh, specifically in this system as well. Um, as you can see, you, all this can be tied in 
with your system, we can handle all the deductions, all the money movement. You don't have to worry about any of that. They can call into our consultative line and address any health concerns and have any questions answered about their benefits. And that way they're not coming in you, barging into your office, asking health and benefits questions, interrupting your day, you know, not necessarily wasting because you want to invest your back in your employees, but occupying your time addressing their concerns on there rather than, you know, something that could help the organization grow and make more revenue and uh, advance your career. Okay. So we go back to the homepage on here. Let's close that out. So we talked about the transferring of risk on there. Now, another way for you to transfer the risk is to, instead of, you know, handling things on your own, let's go ahead and jump back into the slide. What I want to do is cover another thing on here. Uh, being an ad hoc uh, manager is, is a big ordeal. You know, a, ad hoc HR manager, you know, because you're not certified in it. You know, uh, you can do open source research, but you may not be getting the reports on it on time. You may find the wrong information or just a portion of information and overlook something. And if you're doing that, then you're bringing on additional risk. You, you don't really need to bring on to your organization. So uh, what I've seen on here, and this is uh, some quick infographic, 70% uh, of companies uh, smaller companies, they have an ad hoc HR manager, meaning that someone is not certified. They're just taking it on as additional duty. And the Army, when I was an intelligence officer, we took on thousands of additional duties for safety, for environmental, you know. But a lot of those extra duties that you did on there, you weren't focused on that. Your main duty was preparing the troops for battle on there. And then your secondary duties came uh, with Okay, making sure compliance with all these other different little tasks for safety, for environmental, for um, for legal, you know, for people transitioning out. Uh, y you got a lot of those that needs to be tracked, and those are just additional, you know. Uh, for deployment readiness, we had to track whether a, a soldier was ready for, uh, had their certifications for training. I'm sure you'd be doing the same thing as a manufacturing plant. You know, you want to make sure your employees are certified in certain things. They're handling hazmat, their forklift operation certifications, their safety training for it. You want to make sure all that's already done, you know. Uh, so as an ad hoc HR manager, now you got to devote time to that. But you really, your main job is finance. You're probably dr dropping the ball somewhere along the line there. And most likely it's going to be the HR piece. So uh, as you can see here, the owner or the president CEO is taking up the majority of those ad hoc HR duties. And, uh, and then it falls upon finance. You're next. I mean, as a uh, as an account manager, as a controller, as a chief financial officer, I mean, those are the duties that are probably most likely going to fall in line with you. If they don't have money for having an HR manager as they're growing, they, haven't, they didn't have the money for that, you were the top priority that brought you on board, but they're throwing this additional duty on your lap you know what, man, that's, uh, that's a high risk that you're taking on there. So now 82% of them, you're not alone. I mean, a lot of companies do this. There's 70% of them doing it. 82% aren't certified in HR. 29% don't even use any system to try to keep them updated on HR functions. And one in five, don't, they're not really confident in knowing what's out there, knowing the information, okay? 78% uh, worry about keeping up with the changes. I mean, we can go into changes right now. There's a lot of changes that are occurring. I mean, the there's different types of uh, wage and hour lawsuits that are occurring right now. There's been 27,000 safety inspections in the manufacturing from OSHA. All right. There's uh, leave for domestic violence victims, sexual harassment laws, uh, sexual harassment training in the state of New York right now for supervisors and employees, depending on the size of your organization. There's... Uh, yeah, interviews and interviews, you can't ask certain questions. You know, this may not have to do with your state, but man, the state of Mississippi, I found out you can't do a uh, polygraph. You know, it's pretty crazy, but I didn't know that. If I was in the state, I just transferred from uh, New York down to Mississippi. I'm trying to expand into uh, the manufacturing plants down there, open up uh, one of our, another corporate location. And guess what? I don't know the labor laws out there. That was a big one. You know, it's not likely, you know, I just bring that up. It's kind of funny, you know, I just bring that up because it's not likely you're going to do something like that. But what else can you not say in the interview? Do you know you can't ask about the past salary or in New York or any earnings or any 
any compensation whatsoever includes like whether they got health and benefits, retirement. You can't ask that in an interview. Yeah, and you also in a pre screening, you can't conduct a drug test for marijuana. You know, uh, there's protections against uh, natural hairstyles. Uh, there's there's a Fair Work Week Act. Uh, you know, for changing the employee's schedules randomly. You got to give them advance notice on that. There's a paid safe and sick leave act. You know, the employees are entitled to paid sick leave to address their health concerns. There's an ABC test for determining if an employee is uh, an employee of yours or not. You know, there's a uh, manual labor is supposed to be paid at a higher frequency than others at a weekly rate. Uh, there's been changes to the uh, employment uh, I say rate of pay in New York. Uh, I say with uh, with 11 or more employees in New York City itself. You know, if you're in the boroughs in there, in the metropolis of New York City, uh, that's $15 an hour that you got to pay your employees. Uh, if you're with uh, 10 employees or fewer, it's uh, now increased from $13.50 an hour to $15 an hour. In Westchester and Long Island, that's $13 an hour, increased from $12 an hour. Uh, the remainder of New York State, it increased from eleven ten dollars an hour to eleven and eighty dollars an hour. Okay. There's other new labor laws that came out, and uh, there's different lawsuits out there right now. Let me tell you. Let me go over some of the lawsuits: misclassification for exempt versus non-exempt, employee versus independent contractor. If you got an independent contractor that works for you and only you, that's an employee. I mean, pre and post shift activities. Uh, um. If you're making an employee work before they even get to work, I want to be paying them for that, okay? Uh, off the clock work, okay? Uh, there's no such thing as not working on the clock. <laughs> you got to pay that employee for those hours. Uh, unpaid overtime, okay? Uh, unpaid overtime is just either a miscalculation thing or, you know, I've seen it. My brother here, uh, he, he had worked for a security organization and that's why he ended up transitioning to a different one what they were doing is like, oh, we want to keep our overtime within a certain range. Hey, man, I'm going to pay you the overtime for only 20 hours this week. The remaining 40 hours uh, overtime that you got, I'm going to pay that next week. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's going to get you into some big issues. Okay. Uh, meal and rest breaks. Uh, record keeping violations. Wage statement errors. Uh, use of biometrics. You know, that's if you're using... You know, biometrics to get inside, gain access uh, for different reasons, and it's not uh, too code. I mean, you can have a lawsuit against that. Well, fortunately, ADP's technology is, okay? Now, uh, so, you know, a lot of them, I'm sure you're not happy. You know, it says here that over 65% are not happy with that role and don't want to be doing it, okay? So, I mean... Right now, there's there's a lot facing you as an HR manager, ad hoc HR manager, and as an additional duty. And then there's a lot of things going into it right now. Uh, heck, uh, unemployment is at its lowest, you know, since uh, uh, Joe Namath here. You know, unemployment has been at its lowest since uh, the 70s. I mean, last time the quarterback was of the Jets in the 70s during that time frame was Broadway Joe Namath. Uh, he was a quarterback around that time frame. We've come a long way since him, you know, long way uh, to having another uh, another quarterback in place, another rookie quarterback, and he's doing all right. Uh, he, I think he'll pick up next year. He ain't got mono this past year and impacted his play. He'll get into the rhythm now. As you can tell, I'm an avid football football fan. <laughs> so and if you can see that 30.7 days is the time that it takes to hire an employee. So unemployment is at its lowest. You can see in Buffalo, New York, there's three jobs to fill for every employee candidate that's available. Okay, so employees are extremely in short short supply right now, and it's taking a long time to get them on board, up to a month's time frame. You know, uh, and so how do you shorten that? How do you deal with these concerns as an HR manager for dealing with the risk and also dealing with uh, shortening the onboarding time? And getting uh, having maybe a bench of employees readily available to hire that are actually qualified to do the job, you know. And then what you're doing right there when you have an understaffed employees, man, they feel overworked, they're stressed, and they're less productive. So what can you do to fix these things, okay? You know, 
let's go ahead and dive into the back into the run platform into the demo you can see exactly in the demo right now uh, what is available as an ad hoc HR manager to make your role a whole lot easier or to transfer that risk in its entirety so let's go ahead and zoom in you can see in here there's a bunch of HR features the HR 411 handbag we click on that it will take you to another another page on here you can see that you got an HR help desk that you can contact available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is the standard time you can contact them anytime during that time frame unlimited amount of questions and to address all your concerns specific to HR instead of uh, googling it you can get immediate assistance right then and there okay or if it's something that can wait you can submit an email question it can be responded back in less than 24 hours you can see hey man you can ask questions about uh, benefits compensation discrimination health and safety you know that wrongful lawful termination lawsuit you you can ask the HR admin questions staffing and training union questions all right and uh, you can search our database and see if there's something already in there for you to have a, an answer you know frequently asked questions already you can search that database right then and there while you wait for your response via email if you wanted to dive into that okay uh, if you go back into the HR 411 homepage, you can see that you get five background checks for free in our smaller packages up to 25, okay? And our larger packages, that's included. There's no additional cost because employees have a tendency to fib on their resume. They do. I mean, that's part on it. They try to dock it up, make themselves look better than the next candidate. So, Heck, man, I'll tell you a story right now. Uh, we do these same background checks for being brought on board. It's a criminal for not only the county, the state, uh, the federal. It's also employment. You know, have you actually worked at these places you put in your resume? Uh, it's also uh, on their education. Did you get that degree or didn't you? You know, we can confirm that. We had a candidate apply and try to get in with us and say that he had a degree, and he didn't. You know, and uh, I'm sorry, hopefully he does find another line of work on there that's appropriate for him until he does graduate. Uh, but that was just one of the requirements for the position. And this technology here was able to divulge that. So, I mean, you can check in here. You can check within which each candidate, where they are in the process. Uh, you can uh, start screening a new candidate, submit it into the system. But it's all totally free, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, close that. Go back, close that out. We're going to go back to the HR home screen. You get an employee handbook. Employee handbook is big time, and it's going to save your organization because all these things that we went over, all these labor laws that came out, they're requiring you to put notices up on the walls and have the employee notified and confirm that they are aware of their rights uh, specifically. So here, employee handbook, this is one that you can do electronically. You put your employee, your name of your organization, you know, you know, uh, Joe Seeds Manufacturing. All right. And the industry, of course, is in manufacturing. All right. And number of employees have about 20 employees. Reason this does the employee handbook, depending on your employee count, depending on the industry you're in. Depending on the state you're in, it gets automatically loaded with certain requirements and labor laws. So let's go ahead and click Get Started. Uh, you can see here, you can put your company name, you can put your email where they can contact you at, the different employees that y'all have, uh, who the office manager is, the main point of contact for HR, who the, uh, the industry that you're going to be working in, what state that you're in. The multiple states, you can add more than one state on here. You can add the state of uh, Kentucky. Uh, you can add your street address, you know, if you're in Watertown, New York, you know, I was actually stationed out in Fort Drum, and that was uh, where I lived at, that was the closest town that was uh, somewhat civilized, matter of fact, that was my address out there, Butterfield Avenue, <laughs> so, and it was a zip code, and you put your company name, the company number out there, uh, I really don't remember my phone number, I guess it was 315, could be something like that, 342, uh, Three seven seven three seven seven three. Okay, click next. Uh, you can input the operating hours in there. You can say, hey, you know, you're gonna be expected to work at a minimum of 38 hours a week. You're gonna get paid on a weekly by uh, basis. 
uh, weekly basis, you know, on what specific day of the week, you can put a specific dress code in here, who to contact if you got a complaint, uh, you where to park, don't be parking up front, that's for, you know, executives only, because they got to come in, come out uh, quickly, you can park further in the back, heck, uh, you can have, uh, you can dive into exactly what you want to put in there as far as if you're offering health insurance, what's available, life insurance, retirement plan. These are great things to improve your employee retention. You can create a discount program on there. Uh, you can create an employee referral program uh, to help you with your employment, uh, getting your employees on board, employee assistance program, you know, credit union, whatever it may be. You can put all that in there. Click next. And then you can edit this. You can edit it manually, change it however you like. This is a disclaimer you can put it on top. Uh, you get a welcome message. You can edit that. Uh, general employment information, at will employment, immigration law compliance, outside of employment, how to conduct yourself, uh, personal data changes, what, what you need to do when you have some changes to be made, who you need to contact, how you can do it, uh, uh, parking, where to park at, Emergency closings, you know, safety issues, safety regulations you can put in here, uh, lactation breaks, uh, jury duty, military leave, all that's already built in here. Employee conduct, you know, confidentiality, uh, make sure in your confidentiality agreement that's on there that uh, there's certain things that you can't prevent them from divulging if there's an investigation. Uh, drug and alcohol abuse, you know, telephone uses in there. I know that's big in the manufacturing plants. You can't be out there being distracted on your phone, operating heavy equipment uh, like a, a cherry picker or a forklift. Uh, I mean, you can't be on the line you know, on your phone. I mean, that's that's you can't be walking in the facilities on your phone. It's just a big way to get distracted and get hurt. So that's something that you can put in here inside your handbook. And if you tell them over and over and over and over and, and they keep violating it and you got it in the policy on here what the termination would be for certain violations and up to termination, they get terminated for it. And they try to file for unemployment. You can show in there. You can send them your employee handbook, time, date, stamp, the date that they opened it. And uh, once it's created, you can put your logo on here. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you uh, what you can do. You can send out your employee handbook directly to the employee, and, or download a copy on here. You can send it directly to them, time, date, stamp, with a unique uh, URL to you, so your employee can view it, uh, with a, a password for them to access it. And you can send it straight to their email. Log in, they view it, and guess that's time date stamp when they actually review their handbook. There's no denying it. It's a um, upholds in court, and you can deny them their unemployment, um, their unemployment claim. So you don't have to be paying for an employee that's no longer working for you. Okay. So and that's it. That's it. You're done with the uh, HR handbook. So we go back in here. You got job descriptions you can access. You know. Uh, specifically, look, this is an example one with administrative assistant. You can access these, you know, for if you needed them for whatever reason. You can add another job description necessary for HR, financing, you know, uh, if you're hiring an on site uh, education or child care uh, person, you know, I mean, you can do all these kind of things and create these job, um, job descriptions and use them as necessary for your specific job boards. Okay, but with our platform, you actually get free access to uh, Zip Recruiter. So let's go ahead and go back into that. But let's start. before we go into that, you know, you got a toolkit for hiring, covers all the documents that you need specific to your state. Here's the different forms you can have access to I9W4s, policies, HR training. Uh, you got guides in there of uh, like for conducting interviews on there. I mean, all that's already in the system. As far as what to do, what not to do. Go back in here. You got a termination toolkit. What to do when you transition an employee. What notices that you got to give them. It's already built in here in the system. You got the forms that you can do. Exit interview, termination letters you got to provide. You know, to keep you compliant. HR fundamentals training that you can launch and get into. And train yourself if you're going to be taking on these duties you're on your own. Okay. Or for your admin to kind of beef them up on their duties. Okay and make them feel more effective at that job. Now, you can do uh, performance evaluations on here. Uh, you got different forms for that specifically as well. You know, tr uh, track your employees for attendance, you know, and more HR training for that. Uh, setting goals, you know, 
trying to train your supervisors. All this is available in here. You can get information on it, okay? Uh, if we go back, uh, record keeping toolkit. Uh, you can keep certain records on like OSHA Act record keeping requirements. You can learn up on it. FMLA, FLSA, HIPAA, uh, ADA uh, record keeping requirements, employee access to personnel files, all these specific security controls. All this is covered in here. All the forms you need to know, paid time off tracker. If you're going to try to track that manually, I highly advise against it. But if that's something you want to do, it is on here. And of course, HR training and different policies. Uh, so you can see the HR toolkit is very robust. It goes into great detail. Uh, we really went to the performance toolkit. Let's get back out of here. Uh, new hire paperwork that you need to bring your employees on board by state, specific for the state you're in. If you're in the state of New York, uh, of course, you can make that change in here. And you can see the different notices you got to give your employees for different stages. If you're going to be offering them a, a job, different forms you're going to need. And we do the new hire reporting as well for you automatically on that side. Uh, so, so you can see there's library for training. You know, you got all this stuff in your HR 411 uh, toolkit and you're available. If you're still going to be doing ad hoc HR, you're delegating that task down uh, to at least take it off of your back. Uh, you can have someone else do it and still feel proficient at that job if that's the, what they're going to be doing, okay? Now, uh, so the HR 411, you saw that. Uh, if you want to get something more robust on here, you have, you know, a way for you to go ahead and contact an HR pro that's certified, SHRM certified, dedicated to you, and can review documents, uh, can give you advice, you know, that knows your organization inside and out, can do a little HR work for you virtually, okay? And you have a HR, this is under the HR Pro package. In this package, it includes, um, you know, discounts for your employees, you know? They can get discounts for any type of uh, different items on there for like uh, cell phones. Uh, it's not going to let me log in, but you get discounts for cell phones, you get discounts for... Um, restaurants, you know, going out to different restaurants uh, for, you know, procuring services to different establishments. And of course, it's available. The same buying part that we leverage to get those kind of discounts is available to you, HR Pro. Uh, you got the life care option on here. Most likely you won't be able to log in. But of course, in the life care option, uh, you know, they can conduct research. They can search in here for certain things on here, get expert help. We can call somebody and ask them for different things. Assistance with like, you know, taking care of your parents. I mean, in the Latino community, we're big on, you know, taking care of our parents as they get elderly, you know. Uh, so we can uh, find adult daycares for them. Uh, maybe in-house uh, nurse aid assistance. Uh, you can get finance consultations, legal consultation for your employees. I mean, uh, help them out with their certain issues that they're getting in, and then they're less stressed, less stressy, and less stressed employees are more productive. The emotional health, wellness, uh, you know, house and home, travel. You know, if you're trying to find a daycare for your kids, if you're trying to sell your home, you know, all this is available in here. If you're trying to get advice as to what are the top schools for me to go to for a job that's related to manufacturing that can help me progress in my career. They can look this up and see which ones that are available to them and which ones they're affiliated with to get discounts at, okay? So, and uh, if you wanna, you know, handling the, you can become a little bit more robust here. Let me zoom out some. We got an affiliation here associated with Legal Shield. Uh, we partner with them because guess what? You can protect your organization. Another layer of security against what's out there. You know, you can have unlimited uh, consultations on these matters right here for hiring, firing, small claims, equipment leases, incorporation, bankruptcy, joint ventures, landlord talent, uh, landlord tenant disputes, bad check recovery, uh, government compliance, verbal contracts, zoning, workers' compensation, credit harassment, customer complaints. You can get consultation, all those things, unlimited amounts on any of those subjects. Uh, you know, but, you know, 20 calls per year or letters that can be written on your behalf. And we, they can make these calls on your behalf. They can make a call saying, hey, I'm this legal organization representing your, uh, your establishment. I'm calling uh, about collecting on these account receivables that haven't been paid at. All right. So um, you can, you know, call about all those different things. 
you can call about a contract that didn't fulfill a job or a, it's been, they stated they're going to work within these constraints on there for your specific project, but they didn't meet that scope. So, and they're way beyond that, and there's a penalty on there, and you want to get out of that contract and you know procure someone else, you want to get some advice on it, you can call them in regards to that. They can send out collection letters on your behalf, up to five per month. They can review a document. They can review that employee handbook, make sure it's legally compliant up to the law specific to your state in New York, okay? Uh, you also get, if you if they, if you know, God forbid, you have to be represented in court, uh, you get a 25% discount for the lawyers that we're referring out to you to have these consultations. You can have a designated consultation for th three times per year, 30 minutes each for, you know, patents, copyrights, trademarks, antitrust laws, international immigration, issues arising outside your state with, within the U.S., intellectual property, uh, import, export, customs issues. Man, I, I also have another brand called Aquadicted. I sell online and... Uh, the import issues I was having with that, you know, you got to declare certain things on there. Uh, declare if the, if the species, you, what kind of species you have when you're importing these kind of fish. Because uh, it's uh, live aquatic pets that I deal with as well. You know, there's different things that you have to deal with. Uh, there's different international trade laws you got to uh, comply with. Uh, contracts that you got to comply with as well. And you can have a 30-minute consultative call with them to address these concerns with you. Uh, using Legal Shield, another layer of security for you. Okay. Uh, okay, you get health and wellness discounts on here. Uh, you can have a health and wellness program. You know, wellness workshops, wellness thirst counts. So you can have people come on site. You know, do flu shots, uh, giveaways, um, and you can get discounted for uh, leveraging those items that you give away. Okay. Uh, if you need access and for additional training, another layer of security that. That sexual harassment law in New York, that's big time. Man, that's, a, that's definitely big time. Let me show you here uh, on BizPro. You can select the courses. You can have it in English and Spanish. The community, Spanish community up there in New York is huge. Uh, heck, I got family in Newburgh. We're from uh, Puerto Rico originally. Got family in Newburgh, Poughkeepsie. I used to catch the train there from Beacon down into the inner city in the Bronx. You know, I got family still out there to this day. And, and I have a strong connection with the city. Uh, you can see, hey, and they have it available in training in Spanish for sexual harassment training. They have it in English. You know, uh, they have it for the specific state that you're in. Uh, you got, uh, let's go ahead and dive into OSHA training, you know, training for safety in English and in Spanish. Okay. Uh, you can also have training for your supervisors for HR record keeping training for your ad hoc HR, your sales personnel. I uh, remember some manufacturing plants had sales personnel. They had one that was commission based. I would go to all these different facilities in the state of a whole state of New whole state of New York on there, whole state of Connecticut, uh, trying to get them to put their seeds on their shelves, you know, that they were manufacturing the seed packets. All right. Workplace harassment training. Uh, they got specific business training, which is a big ordeal on there. The training that's available to try to nurture and grow your, you know, your your um, supervisors on there. You know, there's different trainings that you can dive into, you know, so for business success, you know, there's different lessons on there. All this is big time, okay? So, uh, if you close that out, we can go back and uh, you can talk about um, ADPs. Uh, where we talked about this one here. Let's close that back out. Let's go back into Upnetic. Uh, let's say Upnetic is another platform you can leverage on here. Uh, let's just close that out. I don't know why I got blocked. Give me a second. It'll, it'll pop up here. Let's go ahead. Because I was able to get into this before. Let's do... Oh, here you go. Okay. So, so once you log in, it's just for demo purposes, it just let me log in automatically. Uh, there's different things where you can leverage guerrilla marketing, okay? Uh, how to set up your business for success. There's different trainings for making yourself as a professional, off balance on purpose. Uh, five management practices you can give to your employees training. Uh, relationship economics. 
you know, the art and science of building relationships and partnerships, uh, reclaiming your own time to become more efficient, uh, time ownership for sales professionals and for your sales staff, uh, peak performance training, you know, the underdog mindset. Uh, you got training on the six C's of, of marketing, uh, customer service habits, uh, understanding the millennial work workforce. That's a big one on there. The millennial workforce has a, a big focus on less on, you know, actually having a job that pays them a lot. They want to be able to give back to the community to make an impact. You know, they want to have their input received and make an influence change, you know, to to have a role within the organization that's of value to them. And, you know, you can get that kind of training in here. Yeah, they love their Fridays off. They love time off. I know that much. <laughs> you know, my staff here, you know, if we have a promotion going on to, you know, help them uh, reach more businesses, help more businesses, and uh, they want that Friday off, they're going to get that Friday off. They're going to help that business, and it increases productivity. Oh, man, they love that. Uh, more personal time. You know, uh, the presidential principles. I mean, there's a lot on here. Healthcare benefits for small business. Uh, design thinking. I use design in the army on there. It's a great way for you to first determine if you're even addressing the problem. Secondly, uh, make sure you're addressing the problem at all levels and getting feedback of a potential solution. Okay. It doesn't it eliminates biases as well. I mean, this is an amazing way for you to develop a resolution, you know, to combine it with that Lean Six Sigma training. Okay. So all that is available on here. You also get uh, website and digital marketing optimization. If you can't find your website for your organization, you're not on page one on Google, you're not found. So you can put in your website here, analyze my website. Uh, you can go into um, you know, managing uh, your leads on here for you know, emails, your marketing programs, your marketing initiatives, your proposals you put out. You can ma manage your contacts. Uh, you can send out drip marketing, and what that means is that you're sending out emails periodically to someone to subscribe to an inquiry on there. Uh, you can create business plans, business forms, roadmap. You got a learning lab on here, uh, specific for Upnetic. Uh, you can ask questions. I mean, there's a lot that you can do within this system in here. There's questions that you can ask a question and get it answered. It's available for you for your professional development and reducing your risk. And this is all in our HR Pro platform, okay? So you cover from all instances, and uh, you can. We can also. So you know, government talking about risk, you can do be more hands on. Another thing that you get free of charge, free of charge, big time for saving is access to the Wave Accounting platform. Uh, on the Wave Accounting platform, we can just go and click on that. You know, you get in depth reporting. If you're using Intuit QuickBooks, you can transition away from it, and get it for free, right here, free. And you can't be free. There's reports that you can get your balance sheet, income statement, sales tax reports, age receivables, age payables. Um, heck, after you know doing your cash flow analysis, you know cash flow reports as well. That's a big one. You can determine if you have a available cash flow actually on hand. If that's really due to the fact that you didn't pay, you know certain vendors. It's a neat little trick, but uh, it can give you. Uh, you can do general ledger reporting for exporting. Um, you can export it in Excel. You can export it in rich text. You can export it in uh, PDF and import it to another platform. There's uh, seamless integrations you can set up. Uh, you can check out all the transactions here in accounting. Um, you can do a journal. You can do starting balances, ending balances on there. You can review each one of these, see what it was to, make sure it goes to the right category. Uh, you can check out any purchases for the bills themselves and receipts. You can you can invoice vendors. You know you can send an invoice and get paid directly. You know that, that's big time on there. You can shoot out this invoice. You can see which ones are overdue. Follow up on them. Send reminders. Resend it to them. You can draft an invoice. You can check out all your invoices on here. Uh, you can do recurring invoices, customer statements. You can send them a customer statement on there. You know, different products and services that you offer. You can provide an estimate, you know, if you're doing custom things on there. Uh, this is just something that you can show you overview how robust it is. But specific for you, you know, collecting that those, uh, those dues, you know, where if you're working with a reseller, you ship them out this product, 
and you collect it up front a certain amount for actually producing manufacturing it and you still haven't collected upon delivery you know the remaining amount then that's a do out on there you can track all here within the system okay so let me close that out uh, and that's free man that's, that's free there's no charge for that it's all in the system already included in our payroll packages you also get access to zip recruiter man we was talking about man and i mean not having many jobs in buffalo oh man uh, I mean, there's lots of jobs, but there ain't that many employees, you know, so you can see that in here. So how are you going to find these candidates? How are you going to compete? How are you going to retain them? Well, this is a good way for you to post a job in depth. I'm going to tell you, hey, you know, you're looking for an administrative assistant or you're looking for a production line worker, line labor. Uh, you're looking at around for, you know, the Poughkeepsie, New York region or Schenectady, wherever it may be. Okay, so make sure you want to look in around that area. Okay, uh, you can do it for specific uh, manufacturing. Let's do right here, manufacturing operations. Uh, you can, this is you posting a job on here. You can do full-time, part-time, contracted, temporary, wherever it may be. Uh, if it found a template, perfect. You can preview the template, use that template on hand. Uh, you can just say, yes, start with the template or throw the template in here. You can make the adjustments in here. You can do it manually. You can say that you're offering certain benefits um, that make that stand out. Now, the easiest way for you to get ranked, and because uh, ZipRecruiter has it where you can get ranked, and that's how they can get so many applicants and many different job boards. This gets posted not just on ZipRecruiter's job board, but multiple job boards. And to get ranked on Google, you got to enter, you know, what's going to be your pay rate? You saw that it increased in New York. So we're going to make it at least $12 an hour, you know, maximum $15 an hour. Um, you do hourly and you maybe do plus commission plus a bonus. You know, you put your street address, you know, 124 Main Street, Watertown, Watertown New York, 0110. Uh, you can go ahead and put in the specific skills that you need. Hey, you know what? It needs to have a uh, forklift license, forklift operator's license. You know, in case you're trying to hire a staff uh, as a backup too, you know, you want him to have that forklift operator's license just in case, you know, the forklift operator is not there. You'd rather run short on the production line than run short of that forklift operator. Uh, so you can put in here uh, which company is hiring, what department, uh, why you, they should work for this company, hiring company description, you know, and who you are, you know, different account user who posts it. Accepting applications without a resume, I would say no. I mean, but, you know, for, I guess for laborers, that would be okay, you know. Uh, if you want them to apply for the job, you can save and post it now. Boom. The job gets posted. You, you, it gets ranked on Google, and then you get all your applicants uh, applying. So you can check out your candidates that apply for it. You can check out Vikram. Man, Vikram, oh, man. Let's say he was stellar. Loved him. Ah, oh, man, I love this guy. I want to bring him on board. I want more people like Vikram. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Give them a thumbs up. Okay. Oh, you can't even see that on there. Here, let me adjust that for you. Let me give you, oh, you, see, you can see Vikram's thumbs up. <laughs> Let's make that adjustment real quick. All right, Vikram, give him a thumbs up. Vikram, good guy. Did excellent work. You know what? I want that candidate. Uh, Clayton, uh, you're not quite meeting, not quite meeting my standards. And uh, Michelle, no, I don't want these. Essentially, what the system's going to do is going to use the AI, artificial intelligence, to show you candidates and invite candidates to apply that fit or most like Vikram and not so much like Michelle. Now, so you can also uh, search the databases. You know, you can go in here and search the resume database, search for that specific job, keyword skills, certain distance, uh, job title, you know, whether they have a bachelor's or not. Uh, if they're in a certain uh, certain experience in a certain industry, you know, experience level, how many years, and then you can go ahead and click start searching, you'll find it. Okay, you can find the uh, you know the resumes that you viewed. You can go back and look at them. You can say, hey, this is the rating of the resume that you viewed. You get so many views on there, uh, 25 views a month. You get a a posting. Okay, you can post for a specific job you need for this job, and you got like 500 candidates. It's like a parking space. You parked in there, 
You got all the advertisement you needed. You got uh, all the, you know, 500 applicants to apply for it. You can take it back down, change the position, post it right back up. And you can do that a million times for different jobs and get as many applicants as you need and keep that bench built up. So you can have a, a bench of candidates that are actually qualified for your for that specific role, okay? Uh, you can see the active jobs that you have on place, all right, that you already posted. Uh, you can ask for help. You can download the app, you know, manage the candidates on your app on there. And here's the dashboard. We got everything that you can see on there on site, what kind of activity you got going on, how many more credits you got. And you can always purchase more if need be. You know, but we have packages where you get, uh, yeah, packages where you can get two job slots at the same time, uh, or you can get more. But uh, you know, instead of paying for another provider, you you would actually instead of paying for another provider, you can put that money back in your pocket. I'll give you an example. Indeed, the quality of the Indeed right now, the quality of Indeed is pretty low. So you know, you get a butt ton of candidates but they don't necessarily qualify. They don't meet the qualifications that you want. And so now you're sifting through a lot of candidates unnecessarily. Uh, and also, on top of it, um, if you're using Craigslist, the quality of the candidates is down. I mean, you may not even get applications. And you're spending $25 a week per posting. You know, So that can come out to $100 easy. So you can put that money back in your pocket. That's $1,200 a year back in your pocket from not having to invest in a recruiting platform. Okay, let me close that out and let's go ahead and also dive into the integrations. Let me see, make sure we covered everything on here. Uh, we covered reports, the document vault, you can put in here all your employees records instead of having that filing cabinet behind your back. Uh, man, you can put the employees records specific for the employee, property you assigned them, if you find assigned them safety glasses, you know, uh, uh, headgear in order to protect their ears, um, their vest, you know, safety vest when they're walking out on the floor. Uh, if you assigned them, uh, if you did a performance review, uh, performance appraisals, you can put all that here in the system. And it's protected. You have unlimited amount that you can leverage in the dock vault, okay? And, and it's, it's a cloud resource that you can access anytime, okay? And that way you don't have to mess around with that record keeping behind you, the manual system. The filing cabinet. Nobody likes that, okay? Update you to the 21st century. Let's go. So, of course, it's going to reporting. Reporting, you can do very in detail, month to date, quarter to date, year to date. Uh, you can do employee garnishments. You can break down your reporting. You can see it's all here for you to view if necessary and do custom reporting as well. ACA tax filing reports, you can export data to fill out your ACA tax forms if you're up to that size. You can uh, assign property, uh, record, record employee birthdays. You can do all the reports on here for that as well. So, you know, you can you know be more personable with your employees and keep them on board. Heck, I love it, I love it. My last employer, they forgot my birthday three years in a row. And there was just an employee there trying to take that task on their own and just make it more festive. And she didn't didn't remember my birthday ever. You know, that's not a problem. I'm not, I didn't hate her for it. But you know what? Here at ADP, man, I get acknowledged for my birthday every single year. I mean, it's amazing. It makes me feel welcome. I think that's something you should definitely implement. Uh, you can do new hire reports. Uh, you can do everything, all these reports in here uh, for benefits, HR, and anything related to reports. Uh, you can edit your employees. You go ahead and check out your employee directory. You can make edits to each one of these employees. Info, payroll info, earnings deductions, direct deposit. You can remove the employee. Uh, you can do company info. You can update your company info in here. Uh, contacts, uh, specific contacts. They're allowed to be contacted and authorized to deal with payroll. Uh, the bank account, if you're trying to change the direct deposit. Uh, where we withdraw the payroll information and actually... Uh, to pay your taxes on a quarterly basis for you and file your taxes for you and also to pay your employees. You can update that in here in the system. You can change your pay, refre your pay frequency if you're going to notify your employees of it. Hey, 30 days in advance, you can change your frequency from weekly to bi-weekly. Make sure you're in the compliance with your laws there in the state of New York. Uh, okay, uh, we went in here. Uh, employee access. You can send them access to the employee app. You know, you put in their email, uh, 
to view their statements online. You manage employees access. You can submit it. You can say yes. You can say no. Um, we can set this up for you. Um, they can say, you know, you can update all this information, the billing information, where to send the, the mail, okay? Um, make sure it's not a P.O. box. Let's see. You know, you can have specific lists for different items in here. Um, you can have, let's see, already preloaded into the system. You can add users as a security measure and tell them what their role is and what level they can come in here and make necessary edits. Like I was telling you, uh, they can make the necessary edits for the timekeeping piece or to upload documents in Doc Vault. You can do all that in here, okay? There's also general ledger interfacing. So if you want to use, you don't want to use the Wave Academy one. You already spent so much time in building the uh, the inner the platform that you're using for accounting, you know, such as Intuit. That's fine. You know, you can still export and import this data right into the or send it directly to the platform that you're using. Okay. So the last thing I want to cover was integrations on here. Uh, integrations are big uh, within ADP. Let me go into the ADP marketplace. So we dive into the ADP marketplace. Here, you can actually integrate certain apps specific to your industry. And here, since your industry, uh, we're gonna look at the industry for um, manufacturing, specifically for yourself, and like different things that you're probably already using. You're already using to this day, or if not, you can get you can review something that you can integrate with our platform that's more robust. If you didn't like our services for timekeeping, you want something that's more in detail that you can do job costing with, then you can go ahead and select a uh, time labor management system. You know, like uh, T Sheets or uh, Right Time, you know, or uh, you know Repicon or Enterprise Work Workforce. You can select any of those uh, on there. If you want something more robust for onboarding rather than ZipRecruiter, you can use Jazz HR. You can manage the applicant tracking process from uh, the listing all the way to their onboarding using Jazz HR. Okay. You can get compliance consultations on there for employment verification. Uh, you can get uh, certified payroll processing if you're working in the union. Here, let me zoom this. Zoom in so you can see these. You know, if you have a union or you're outsourcing your contract to subcontract to the government, they want your reporting in a certain format, you can actually export that data and they'll complete the forms in points north for you, okay? You can do Litmos training, online training for your employees. You can do global PEO services. That's a big one for manufacturing because uh, maybe you're outsourcing manufacturing to, you know, India, China, South America, you know, another place where the, you get tax incentives and the wages are cheaper, the costs are less. You know, you're doing that or you're expanding, you know, you're expanding out to another location. You want to be able to keep track of the labor laws unique to them, uh, to pay them in the right currency, uh, to pay them in, uh, you know, have their forms in the right language and pay them on their proper labor laws. Now, global PO services is the way to go so you can manage that labor force worldwide we're not just here nationwide united states we're here to grow as you expand as well now there's other ones on here i like to highlight two of them that's uh pretty big time let me see if they pop up right out the bat uh let's see i'm not seeing it on here so let me see if i can go ahead and click on it but you can filter this you know, there's thousands of apps on here at the moment but the one i want to look for is called pay active you know, this is something that's um, being used as, as a way to provide on-demand, you know, pay for your employees. In case something happened during the work week, they can't wait till Friday to get their check. They can take a pay advance and it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you, the business owner, anything at all. All right. And it costs employees, you know, just like going and cashing their check at Walmart, $3, you know, but they can, the kicker here, they can actually... It costs them that amount, but they can, you know, withdraw an unlimited amount uh, allowed up to the amount of hours that they worked, 
you know, and what you're tracking and automatically sync. We don't we don't give them the full wages paid so they can leave you high and dry. If they work those hours, they can withdraw a certain percentage of it. And you can set all these parameters on there because you don't want somebody being irresponsible with their pay. But at the very least, you do want them to be able to take care of certain things. If uh, they blew a tire and they got to spend uh, an extra four hundred dollars replacing their tires and their pay doesn't come till Friday, they can request a cash advance for the hours that they worked. And they can do up to three of them in the same pay period and only get charged once. I mean, that, that's amazing. Uh, another one here is um, called Plastique. I think it's an amazing one that kind of stands out. Uh, Plastique is big time. Uh, reason being is that here, and you can actually fund your payroll. Instead of having it come out directly and paying cash with it, you can fund your payroll on credit. Using your credit card, uh, you can use a credit card where you can get like uh, cash back. Oh my goodness! If you did your, my goodness! If you did your payroll, I mean, using that example of like what, that was uh, I don't see if I can pull up the history, but that's, you know, let's do again. Let's do eleven fifty. I know the pay is over that now, but just a simple example: twenty times forty times 52, you know, plus, uh, you know, you got 40,000 times five supervisors, that's 200,000 plus 200,000 plus uh, maybe 80,000 for yourself as a CFO. That's about 800,000. All right, so imagine, you know, 1% of 800,000 getting that cash back. That's $8,000 cash back. I don't know about you, that I can fund advertising, uh, that can fund a bonus program for your sales team, a uh, bonus program for your production line. I mean, heck, uh, you can fund Christmas bonuses with that. I mean, that's big time to get that kind of money back. Um, so, And also, you can leverage this during different parts of the year. Let's say if you if you have an influx, and I know you're doing uh, rears planning, you know, backwards planning for your current customers, but sometimes you have an influx of personnel. I know I like to do research and try to get ahead of the season a year in advance. So in the in springtime, I'll be putting in all my all my orders in, and you know, for production, you know, for arrival already in June. So I can go ahead and start distributing and advertising for it in June so that I can actually sell in November in the fall time frame. So I'm looking up for something fall. Uh, I'm already doing my research December, have the product ready the way I want it designed and releasing it and uh, in the springtime and submitting the request in January for it to be manufactured. So if you're getting a lot of influx, and especially that's when I usually get my money. That's when I use that get my budgeting. So you're going to get a lot of orders during that time frame. You're like, oh, man, I got to plan and meet these constraints and get this in the time frame that he needs in i need extra workers to meet these demands that's being made of my manufacturing plant well now you can you can say hey what instead of uh you can use your overtime because overtime costs you know already the the cost of actually having your full-time employee is already taken care of in the first 40 hours so the only thing that goes into it is just the time uh, for you know paying them for the payroll costs after 40 hours so it's actually advisable to use you know overtime more often they're not but you don't want to overwork your employees so in case you need more staffing you know if you're getting your employees up to 50 hours a week already that's a good use of overtime on there you can bring in temporary staff you know and fund it using your credit card in case you don't have the cash because this is an influx boom pay for it you get a little cash back for it or you get your mileage on there make a bonus for yourself as if you're the owner for the organization this is big time on there to be able to use this and there's thousands of other apps out here uh, okay that thing don't want to don't want to close so let me get it out the way <laughs> so, all right so now uh there's thousands of other apps on here you go to apps home i mean you got apps for you know recruiting and onboarding uh, another one for finance, man, you can you can integrate directly with the finance platform for IBM. Uh, you can uh, you can integrate with a lot of these different things for recruiting on board, for compensation, um, you can for you know uh, benefits, uh, benefits administration, 
Uh, you can use our platforms or you can use the one that you're already using. You can use time, labor, uh, management. Uh, seven shifts is another big one out there uh, that you can use for time, labor, management. If you have multiple shifts, you got employees exchanging shifts and whatnot, uh, you can go ahead and manage that. Overlapping shifts. Uh, you have different learning management. Uh, the one that we recommend for um, the manufacturing industry is Litmos on there. But, of course, you have any of these other ones that you can use. Uh, performance. You know, all these apps that integrate already with your payroll platform are available to take advantage of. And, I mean, that's the, here in the ADP marketplace. So you can explore that. If You can even ask me a question, and I can probably tell you, hey, you know what? This is the be best ones out there. Check them out. Okay? And so, so that was the uh, demonstration on there in a nutshell. Uh, let me go ahead and transition. We're going to do a recap, a quick recap of what we covered on here. Uh, what we covered on here was the impact to your role. Okay, there's uh, there's health and benefits impact. Let me zoom in on here, so you can see the text. I mean, that's a big ordeal. I can't really see the text. That's a problem, right? So, all right. So here we go. Now with the the impact to your role, where we talked about the health problems that you can get. You know, you can de you can get uh, a decrease of stress. You know, from being overworked, you're being overworked, you can decrease that amount of hours you're working, decrease your stress, decrease the impact that it has on your health and your mental health as well and your relationships. Uh, you can improve those relationships by being home on time for dinner. Uh, I know, heck, I better not have been late for dinner. I'll tell you what, but she was very loving. Man, I had an amazing wife there. Um, uh, of course, I was irresponsible. And not the best person that I could be, not the best husband I could be, but uh, I ended up, uh, which would call she would have dinner and make sure she kept it hot and ready for me to arrive. When I was in the military, man, I worked till 9 30, 10 30 at night sometimes, and she would stay up with me to have dinner with me. Oh, wow, that's, uh, uh, that's a memory that just got back thrown at me. And I, I think that's invest back into your family, okay, and take those hours to do so. And, um, you know, also, you know, there's a huge impact towards your career. Uh, you know, if you're making these changes to your organization, you're saving, you're saving time, you're reducing risk, you can clearly state how you implemented this new technology, and then turn around and do some research into the production line technology, safety technology that's out there, and uh, increase that or lose, use some Lean Six Sigma training uh, to uh, pr improve the pr efficiency of your workforce uh, on the ground and make those suggestions, I mean, that could definitely improve your career. You can add different bullets that can say, hey, you know, I'm ready for the next step. You know, let's move me into the CEO position. Or if move me from controller to CFO position. All right. And also uh, on there, if you're the, the owner of the manufacturing plant, this is a great way for you to get, to, you know, break through that barrier. You, it's been very elusive. It's been up there all the way at the top. You're trying to get to that revenue, trying to expand your organization to grow it, and it's been held back. But now you can see that you're starting to be able to move forward now. You're starting to be able to grow, okay, with these different uh, technology that's available because you have the time to do so, okay? Now, of course, I cover my background. You know, I'm a father first and foremost. I definitely enjoy that to my heart and soul. Uh, my children, my everything. Uh, I love gardening. I'm a motorcycle rider, big Buffalo Bills fan. Hey, go Josh Allen. Man, we uh, made it to the playoffs this year, but we're going to take it to the Super Bowl next year, believe that. And, of course, you know, uh, uh, of course, you know, talking about my background here at Role ADP, my role is essentially to help you in your, in your role, you know, help you identify, dive into your role to identify your unique challenges that you're having in your organization and in your role and where you're located at. I mean, your challenges could be different than anyone, you know, from Beacon all the way down to Poughkeepsie, all the way down to the inner boroughs. I mean, your challenges could be completely different if you're in Connecticut versus another state. But this one's specifically for the state of New York, uh, chief financial officers. Um, you know, I want to hear from you, you know, from the horse's mouth. So you, you can tell me what your challenges are so I can align it with something. If you need something more robust than what I just showed you, we, there's levels to this. There's higher levels. You can have something that incorporates everything from hire to fire to retire all in one platform, you know, that has all the nitty-gritty details. 
So if you need something that's more robust like that, that can do job casting, that can do the ACA tax filings for you, uh, that can do the uh, tax opportunity tax filings, that can keep track of your, um, your drug testing, your employee onboarding, your succession planning. I mean, if you want to do that, you can do it. There's another platform called Workforce Now. If you want to know about that, we can do a demo on that one here later as well and want to do a face-to-face -face live demo. We just do the analysis. We show it to you platform in depth and you can ask questions of the tech. He goes into it in very detail. And then after that, we you know give you some pricing and talk about the next steps way forward. And same thing for PEO. You know, PEO, you can leverage your PEO to get the with the buying power of over 15,000 other businesses here with ADP already. You you combine it with that buying power, you can get the Fortune 100 benefits at a discounted rate and stabilize your year-over-year -year renewal rates for health and benefits. Uh, you can reduce your risk for workers' compensation because you're pooling your employees amongst a pool of about even thousands and thousands of more employees and uh, lower your risk overall, all right? So you can stabilize those renewal rates, uh, you know, be able to predict your, your costs, okay? And also attract the top talent. You want to be able to talk, attract the top talent, the PO is the way to go on there. Uh, because you you can compete, you know, that's the moat, that's the barrier to entry for you trying to compete with the larger manufacturing firms that are global, okay? Um, that's the barrier to entry. You want to get past that barrier. You want to create a bridge. PO is the way to go. Uh, there's uh, small qualifications on there. But, hey, with our PO platform, you want to evaluate it, uh, you're actually going to get free benchmarking from us. Free benchmarking is available through us here at ADP. And what you'll be able to do is compare yourself and risk and also employees as far as your compensation and providing them total package versus, uh, you know, uh, not only monetary, but also the benefits package compared to your competitors, local in your area. Okay, so of course I've shown you all the features. You can save over 500 hours plus, big time. If you can reduce your risk, transfer 100% of the payroll, timekeeping, health and benefits, retirement, uh, workers comp risk here to ADP, you can save money. You know, over, you know, $5,000 saved in just your labor, your manpower, okay? If you have a dedicated person that's doing this HR, ad, HR, ad, hoc, ad hoc HR, and also doing the payroll, uh, you can save on no longer having to invest in a recruiting platform because one's being provided to you. You can save on the background checks, you know? That's $75 per background check that you're saving, because it's provided to you for free, five of them per year. You know, that's $540 right there. I mean, um, the savings just keep on building. Uh, those $50 you're paying a month towards the accounting platform that you're using into it, you throw that out the window. That's $600 a year back in your pocket. I mean, th there's so many ways for you to save money using this platform that it's numerous. You can see them all here broken down for you. And there's more. I, I mentioned extra ones on there. So that doesn't mean, you know, your return on investment, specifically specifically for timekeeping. Where we saw that was in the tens of thousands for an employee, a company of your size with employees of 20 plus in the manufacturing industry, specifically in New York. So, I mean, you add those savings up, you're saving the organization roughly $30,000 by updating your technology. So let's talk about the next steps. What are you going to do next? So you've seen the demo. I broke it to you in detail. If you haven't already, you know, the next steps is what you to do is go ahead and complete this form. Get your lock in your month's free promotions. Okay, we're giving away four months free. That's to, until the end of February right now. Promotions change month to month. Uh, I'm going to promise you they're going to be going less months and less months and less months. So right now you can get up to four months free payroll or free three months of free payroll. And that's uh, months four, five, uh, six. And uh, for four months, it's four, five, six, and seven. Uh, so roughly, if you start here in February, you can get you can get May, June, July, and August all free. You know, free invoicing. We also have a referral program here uh, with ADP. You get a hundred dollars for referring uh, employees, not employees, referring uh, your your companies that you know, friends and family. You refer them, they start with ADP. We send you a hundred dollars. Uh, if you refer four, you get a twenty-five hundred dollar uh, credit to your payroll invoices for the year. So you can practically you can get you know 
your payroll free for the year for just referring for other people that you know that can benefit from this, okay? So, so let's go ahead and talk, man. Let's talk these next steps. I mean, uh, you can get your free benchmarking analysis for evaluating our PO business services. So take the next step. Uh, I know you're ready. You heard enough. Uh, you're, you're a person that takes action. I'm in the business of making, helping winners win more with our technology. So go ahead, you know, click below. Uh, click below, fill out that form, and then I'll see you at the designated appointment time that you desire. I'll call you at that time, and we'll dive into you know, learning about you, your background, your history, and your role, your industry, and your specific state, the state of New York, and uh, helping you achieve the goals that you desire in fiscal year 2020. Uh, thanks for watching.